When you tell people that The Flash is one of the most powerful characters in the DC universe, people will kind of look at you, you know, in a different way and start thinking about it. Those who really know will actually say, yeah, it's true. And not only him, the rest of the Flash family, especially Wally West. And of course, the reverse Flash is also there. But I'm mainly here to talk about Barry Allen and Wally West, the Flash. One a mentor, the other a mentee, two of the most powerful characters in the DC universe. So what happens when they both go guard mode? With the list of abilities that they have, I can definitely tell you that they are both OP. So just, wait a minute, wait a minute, just settle down in the comments. I will tell you some of his abilities and some of the feats that he's done throughout the movies, animations, comics, especially TV shows and all that and why I think he's OP. And why sometimes some villains who shouldn't be able to even touch him are able to defeat him or able to, you know, have a win over him firstly let's talk about his speed and the speed force most people think that him running really fast and the lightning that is around him is just for effects no anytime he runs he generates crazy amount of energy that can even we can't even comprehend and it is absorbed into the speed force and that's powering it i'm talking about barry allen he's the originator of the speed force he's the reason why the speed force exists so every time he runs he generates more energy for the speed force and does the speed force growing stronger thereby powering him so every time he runs he grows stronger and faster so past the speed let's talk about his super thinking speed thinking something that is overly looped when it comes to one of his abilities we've talked about how he runs at an unimaginable level of speed and all that so how is he able to avoid all the obstacles that are on his way well in the superman comics issue 709 flash revealed that he can think at the speed of light and he can even perceive events in less than an arrow second an arrow second being the shortest measurement of time ever in existence so he's not only about his speed he's also very very intelligent on top of all that once a telepath tried to read his mind but found out that he couldn't because Barry was thinking so fast that it gave that person a headache. So it's safe to say that not everyone can take over the mind of Barry Allen the Flash. We even saw that in the CW TV show. Wall, lamp, pipe, conduit, duck. Now! I have super speed thinking. He can also create sonic booms by snapping his fingers. For those who don't know, a sonic boom occurs when an object breaks the sound barrier. With this powerful strike, he can knock down opponents. His ability to vibrate is also one of his strongest abilities as it is when he vibrates his entire molecule in his body. So he can vibrate to the molecule of a building and thus pass through that building. He can create a speed mirage. In the new 52 Flash comics, there was a plane that was crashing. So what did Barry Allen do? He vibrated himself into the plane, then vibrates the entire plane and everybody in it through a bridge that would have otherwise crashed the plane safely to land on water. Not only does this demonstrate his level of speed, but his mastery and control over the speed force. We saw a version of that in the Flash CW show, I think season 5 or something. Let's now talk about his infinite mass punch, an ability that is rarely used in the TV shows, movies and all that. You only see this ability demonstrated in the comics and that is even rarely seen. So let me try to explain it so that you understand his ability better. Imagine a meteorite falling down to earth. But even though the meteorite is not as big as the earth, it falling down at that crazy amount of speed, it, it just carries so much momentum that when it strikes the earth, either half of it will be destroyed or half of it will be devastated. Now when you compare Compare that to the Flash's infinite mass punch, the Flash is way faster than the meteorite we are comparing it to. So if an object like the Flash travels with an infinite amount of speed, it's safe to say that it also has an infinite kinetic energy with it. So if the Flash hits someone with a punch that is carrying that infinite amount of speed, that person will be completely annihilated. It's even a debate online whether Superman can survive that. The Flash punches at 1 billion rates per second. That is freaking 1 billion infinite mass punches per second now when you look at this you can tell why it's rarely used there is a version of this in the CW flash show but it is not the infinite mass punch I think it's called supersonic punch now of course let's move on to his time travel abilities something he's mostly known for but because of the dire consequences of it you know flashpoint being one example he rarely uses it only when maybe there's the end of the world or the end of the freaking universe 
Or when DC wants a reboot, then they just use Flash to, you know, mess with the timeline. We saw that in the new, should I say, latest DC animated Justice League Dark Apocalypse. You know what you have to do, mate. Clear the board. Start again. Another Flashpoint. His super healing abilities are also there. He also has speed stealing. He can steal the kinetic energy from other speedsters. And it's not even only applied to people, like objects such as, you know, trains, bullets, and the like. So we've talked about his abilities, some of them that you could potentially say, yeah, this guy is OP. Now, in regards to some of his feats, which I will do that in a separate video, but let me give you a gist of some of them in this one. He's time traveled, he's created remnants of himself that is going so fast that you break away from time and create a double of yourself. He's run on his own lightning, he's even run in and out of a freaking black hole. Next is the Flash being faster than Superman. Yeah, some people may argue that Superman using, you know, his legs is kind of, you know, a disadvantage to him. But that doesn't matter. As fast as Superman can, you know, we know he's freaking fast when he's in the air. But that doesn't mean that he can beat the Flash. And that brings me to this point. The Flash, while it was the Flash, has run to the end of time before. Of course, the energy and the lightning around him is learned how to use them in multiple ways. Now let's talk about why after having all these time bending, mind bending, crazy type of abilities that could easily destroy some villains, why they are able to have a lick on him, touch him, even be able to defeat him. And that is to keep the Flash grounded and to offer him a challenge and of course make the story, you know, <laughs> digestible. Because if they made him display all these abilities, like how fun would the story be? He will easily defeat so many opponents without a challenge and of course with a hero, you want them to go through some tribulations some challenges some defeats before they are what able to beat their opponents that's why captain cold can be able to freeze barry when barry can literally just break all of his limbs in half a second but he doesn't do that and captain cold is able to get him it's sort of just like how superman was giving kryptonite as a weakness it's mostly down to all the heroes if they don't have certain specific type of weakness that is related to an object then it's because of their humanity or someone they love so there you have it what do you think of the flash now let me know in the comments below who is your favorite dc character now when it comes to him going guard mode i think i'll make a separate video on some of his craziest feats in the comics and of course on the small and big screens and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like subscribe turn on that post notification bell not to miss any other video as always nerdy sage here see you guys in the next one